Greetings, I'm Mark, a self-published author, designer, and marketer. Welcome to Unlimited Story, unlimited-story.com, a channel dedicated to writing, world building, marketing, and most importantly, getting things done. If that's interesting to you, consider hopping on our Discord, where we share, critique, and discuss each other's work. We also have an affiliate podcast. Everything you need to know is in the description below. So if you're here to watch this video, chances are you have no idea what you're getting into if you're going to be beta reading. So if that's the case, sit tight because that's what we're going to be covering right now. So what does it take to be a beta reader? Well, most importantly is honesty, and that is the pinnacle of beta reading. You may think that you're helping your author friend or whoever by just kind of giving it to them like real gently. You need to be really honest because beta reading is a line of defense and it offers the writer a way to find out what's going on in your head, when it's going on, and make corrections. If there are problems, it's not too late for them to fix anything. Because I promise you this, and this has happened to me, when the book is done, okay, and changes, you can't make those changes anymore, the people who purchased the book and read it, they will be very, and I mean very honest in their reviews. I know myself, it's happened. I've uh, I finished my first book. I thought it was pretty good. Beta readers did a good job, but there were things in there that people wrote reviews on, and it was really insightful. So... Not that anyone did anything wrong. I'm very happy with that book. But the simple fact of the matter is, if other people had called that out and brought it to my attention, I could have made those changes. Aside from honesty, the next important skill to have is communication, preferably in its written form. Because words fade from memory and emails last forever. Personally, I have all my beta readers fill out surveys, which saves everyone a whole bunch of time, effort, and energy. Um, but here's the key. Here's really, really the key why written communication is so important. Being able to tell someone that something is good or bad is not useful at all. If you told me that a chapter is good, like, that's great. I know nothing about why you said that. What becomes the most important then is answering why. If you can really explain, like, I loved this because, that is really helpful. That way the author can say, I did this here, and they can kind of explore why that happened, and do they want to do it again? Or if it's not good, what went wrong at this point in the story? Was it too noticeable? Was the plot twist too obvious? So being able to break down exactly what happened and being able to kind of take a step back from the book, you know, hey, you're reading this chapter, being able to take a step back see what's going on, be honest about it, and then communicate that honesty and say, this is, this is what I feel, and here's why. So what actually happens in a beta reading? Well, that's really dependent on the author. I personally run a really tight ship with my beta reading. It's very well organized. I know exactly what's happening, when it's happening. I email everyone. I give them an outline that basically says, here's the time that this is going to happen. This is how many words it's going to be. This is what I'm hoping to have done. Here's what you're going to receive from me for being a beta reader. So everyone is very aware of what's going to be happening. And then they always have it, of course, in writing so they can refer back to it. So after the initial invite, chances are you're going to be invited to some type of data collection. Now that sounds really fancy, but it's really all it is is a way of getting the information to the author. So this can be done written, this could be done through websites, it can be done a dozen different ways. Personally, I do everything through Google Forms because I love it and it keeps everything organized for me. And then at the end, I get this amazing spreadsheet that I stare at and sometimes cry at for, for hours. Now the big thing about the whole data collection process is there needs to be a very thorough understanding of what is expected in there. So for example, in the Google Forms, I have very specific questions like, hey, what'd you think of the main character? You know, what are your initial thoughts on this chapter? You know, very specific questions. So what I would say is incredibly important, so for the author and the reader is to be clear what is expected to be put in as far as information. So 
there, you know, you could say like, you know, it could be one question where they're like, what are your thoughts on the chapter? That could go many different ways. So I would say, be very specific about the information that you want. So whether you're the author or the beta reader, understand like, hey, what is being asked of me from this information? Because it is not useful when, you know, questions or, or responses are all over the place and they're not the same for every every chapter. I find it really useful for them to all be uniform. That way, um, as beta readers are moving through the book, they're kind of they kind of get better. You know, it's a, it's a human thing to get better over time with practice. So, yeah, like the first uh, chapters or sections may be kind of rough, like, oh, hey, what's going on here? And, you know, you don't really know how to, how to respond to certain questions, but you should be able to get a feel for it. I've noticed over my, I'm on my fourth book now, and I've had the same beta readers for, you know, a good portion of them. And these beta readers, they keep getting better. They, you know, they start focusing on very specific things. And it's really interesting because certain aspects of people's personalities become more apparent and you start seeing like, I can, I bring in this beta reader and they will find this, this beta reader gravitates towards this type of character. And it's also really interesting because what one beta reader may enjoy, uh, may really enjoy a chapter. Another one may despise just because of personal preference. That is incredibly important. And this is why honesty is so important because the author then is able to defer what they want to do. They will take that information and be able to kind of, they, they make the decisions in the end. Like, is this what I was going for or was it not? And with all that said and done, now you're actually able to start doing the beta reading, which I will tell you is a long and tedious process. Because at least for my beta readers, I have them read a chapter and then fill out a survey, which kind of breaks your flow. You know, traditionally when you read, you're like, hey, I'm going to read, 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 read until I get bored, until I get to a part I don't like, till I run out of time, whatever. The, the filling out of chapters, the, you know, it kind of pulls you out of the story. I'm not going to lie, it kind of ruins things for you. Uh, but it is unbelievably important to the author. Like, I cannot stress how important beta reading is like it has changed massive chunks of my book for for the better and uh you are doing the author a huge service uh by working on this for them um so huge kudos to you guys beta readers beta readers are they're the best and that's it for beta reading. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider subscribing or watching whatever one of my videos that YouTube suggests. Thank you. Peace.